Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Today's video is gonna be on organic acid testing. We're gonna dive in deep to a patient's lab. We're gonna go over organic acids, uh, how to look at them testing wise and what they actually mean from the inside out. So off the bat, organic acids are made by your metabolism. They come from amino acids or protein essentially. They can give us a window deeper under the hood of what's happening with B vitamins, with methylation, with detox, with neurotransmitters, mitochondria, mitochondrial function, how you're generating energy from proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, neurotransmitters, oxidative stress, um, it even can look at fungus and bacterial overgrowth. So it gives us a good window of what's happening underneath the hood. Now, when you look at these tests, you'll see a test on screen here, and we'll go through it. Here's the interpretive guide, but we can go through it and actually look at the summary of abnormal findings and go through what everything means. But one by one, the big five things, because we always get to the root cause, what's the underlying cause of why these organic acids might go out of balance to begin with? Well, number one, poor diet. That can be poor macronutrients, proteins, you know, you're on a low fat diet, a very high amounts of carbohydrates with insulin resistance, or it could be just poor quality of food, right? Um, lots of toxins, chemicals, inflammatory foods as well. So making sure the diet's on point, that's number one. Number two is going to be malabsorption. There could be low stomach acid or enzymes. You could have infection, infections in there, whether it's SIBO or bacteria or parasitic infections. It could even be food allergies as well, gluten sensitivity followed by leaky gut, etc. Number three is going to be stress. That could be emotional stress, such as relationship, financial issues, um, family, friends issues, work issues. It could also be too much exercise, very high amount of physical exercise, or even too little. Right? And then it also could be sleep, poor sleep. Sleep really helps recharge and reinvigorate you for the next day and repair, obviously, as well. Number four is toxicity. Toxins, whether it's from Roundup or pesticides, glyphosate, heavy metals, right? And then environmental stressors like mold or mycotoxins or even EMF. And then number five is genetic, whether it's an MTHFR SNP issue or you just need certain higher levels of other nutrients like magnesium or B6. Everyone's a little bit different. So if we kind of recap, the big five that cause the imbalances in the organics to begin with are going to be number one, nutrition, number two, malabsorption, number three, stress, number four, toxins, number five, genetics. So now knowing that, let's dig in. So off the bat, you can see this patient's lab test, a lot of things are popping up, issues with fatty acids, issues with carbohydrate, energy. The big thing off the bat is amino acids, amino acids, amino acids. I mean, look, carnitine is actually made from methionine and lysine, a free form aminos, tyrosine, neurotransmitter issues. So this is low adrenaline or catecholamines. This means the neurotransmitters are more burnt out. So off the bat, the big thing I'm seeing is stress and or malabsorption. When you see amino acids like this go crazy off the chart, that's definitely an issue. Lower brain amino acids and obviously gut issues. In this patient, we have other lab tests on this patient, but there's some infections present as well, which is setting up for that area number two. Remember the malabsorption issue? So off the bat, we're seeing nutrients not quite present at optimal levels and just the pattern we're seeing here really tells us there's a, a strong number two a malabsorption going on. The person's diet's already good, pretty good. Uh, malabsorption is definitely present. And with that, stress definitely becomes an issue and sleep and all that. So we're working on that with the adrenals and diet and lifestyle. But number two, malabsorption is definitely present. So let's go look at the nitty gritty of the lab testing here. So you see these various quintiles. We like the patient to be somewhere between the top part of the first and the bottom part of the fourth. This is what I call the sweet spot. Then we like it right in the middle. This is like the field goal post that we wanna kick the ball right through for that field goal, right? So off the bat, when organic acids go high or low, there's essentially imbalances in those intervention or companion nutrients. And you can see some here if I go back, right? Amino acids for some of these. You can see carnitine for the ethyl malinate. You can see vanillamandelate, the companion nutrients, tyrosine. So when these organic acids go high or low, it means it's either a demand or a depletion issue. So when organic acids go high, there's a massive demand issue. That means the body needs that nutrient at a higher amount than what is present. 
So my analogy to patients is that's like you're making a million dollars a year, but you're spending $2 million a year. You're making a lot of money, but you're just spending too much. Your budget needs to get reined in. That's the big five things we talked about earlier. And then on the depletion side, well, now your organic acids are low. That's typically from chronic stress of those big five issues. It's more of a chronic longer term issue. It's like you're making $1,000 a year, but you're spending 10,000. Well, one, you're not even making that much to begin with. But number two, you're spending way more than what you're making anyway. So it's going to be impossible to get ahead. So that we have to work on getting to the big five of why that is the case. So when you see organic acids high or low, they mean different things, but low is more depleted, highs more demand. They both mean that those intervention nutrients need to be supported and addressed. And obviously the underlying big five stressors need to be looked at, which in this case is definitely going to be malabsorption and stress. So off the bat, you can see this person here. They're a little bit high in the ethyl malonate, which we talked about meaning means carnitine. We saw the L-lactate, so you can see if we draw a sweet spot here, we're very low in this area, and that's another marker for amino acids. So the amino acids are very low. And you can see some of these are two-tailed, some are one. So if you were to do like a beta-hydroxybutyrate, well, there's no left area that's low. But if you go down below under energy production, there's definitely red on the right and left of citrate, cisaconitate, and isocitrate. So that means we have two tailed here and only one tail below. That matters because if we have, let's say, malates low, that's important to note, but it's more important that if isocitrate's low because there's actually a red area, it's two tailed, there's a, a high and a low versus just a high. Hope that makes sense, but we want to keep it out of the, the red, so to speak. So on that note, we can see with the above, that's amino acids, lower amino acids. You can see the mitochondria. Here's our sweet spot, right? If we draw our sweet spot, we only have two organic acids in the sweet spot. We definitely have these two are low, but these three above are more important because there's no red area to the left down there. But we can see the mitochondria and how we're generating energy is severely depleted. And again, this one of this patient's chief issues is fatigue. And you can see you get five areas in the bad left area, and you can see three are very low. So definitely a depleted mitochondria for sure. Uh, B vitamins, nothing's flagged high, but you can see we're definitely in the low area, right? We're definitely in that first quintile. And if you go back here, you can see B complex vitamins are part of what's needed to drive the citric acid, Krebs cycle, or your mitochondria, essentially all the same name here for this. So B vitamins, definitely on the lower side. Methylation, a little bit on the lower side. I get more concerned when these go higher. When methylmalonate goes higher, it means we're depleting a lot of our B12. Um, when B12 isn't present, methylmalonate goes high. So it's definitely part of this sequelae of this low B vitamin um, symptomatology we're seeing. Lower energy, lower B vitamins. Neurotransmitters, you can see this person has low vanillomandolate, which means lower adrenaline lower adrenaline. So their ability to regulate stress and adapt to stress is going to be thwarted. There may even be some anxiety too, very possible, or inability to focus. When you don't have enough adrenaline, enough dopamine, you typically lose that ability to focus uh, at, at longer ends of time there. Uh, homovanillate and 5-hydroxy indoloacetate, that's serotonin and dopamine. Those are okay. Kind of ureates a little bit low. That's a marker for B6. Quinolinate and picolinate are markers for brain inflammation. Look okay, but definitely the adrenaline markers are lower. Oxidative stress look pretty good. I'm fine with these being low because, you know, less oxidative stress, stress or internal rusting I'm totally fine with. Uh, detox, you can see very much on the low side. And again, this didn't even get flagged on the summary page. Now, this is important because if you're just getting this test on your own and you're like, yeah, I'm fine, detox, look, no problems, wrong. There's a massive polar shift to the left, which tells me there's a severe depletion, remember? Low organic acids, depletion on the left section. Sulfate's the only one in the middle, and this is sitting right on the fence of being low, right on the fence of being low. It gets flagged at 28 right? That's 29. And that's a big marker for sulfur amino acids and glutathione precursors. So definitely an issue there, having a harder time to bring those nutrients on board to make the glutathione and to make all the phase two and phase one liver detoxifying support.
And then gut bacteria, he's got one that's high down here and then one that's borderline. Indican is on the higher side. That means not quite digesting protein well, inability to digest protein, some putrefaction happening, and just higher amounts of bad bacteria. And you can see here, this is what gets flagged when it's 5% in the top 5%, 1.41. It gets into the red at 0.73, 1.41, it reached the top 5% of the reference range, top 5%. And this patient here, 1.84. So we don't just look at it when it's high. That's very high. So a lot of gut bacteria, dysbiosis, and some putrefaction happening. So not quite digesting protein. And that makes sense because when we go back to the protein on the summary page, a lot of amino acids were low. And then yeast and fungus looked okay. So if we go back here to the summary page, high and low organic acids mean something. Right? We already talked about that. Depletion on the low end, demand on the high end. The big five tend to be the driving factors of why these go out of balance. Diet, malabsorption, stress, sleep, toxicity, and genetics. Genetics being MTHFR, and we'll see that with high amounts of methyl malonate and or 4-aminoglutamate. But again, this is a quick video just to kind of give you some insight of how we're looking at, how we're interpreting this test. And we put this test together to look at body system three, and we have to look at the other two body systems and maybe even blood work and obviously a full diet and lifestyle review so we can get a complete picture of what's happening under your metabolic hood. So again, this is Dr. J signing off. If you enjoy this video, click subscribe on screen. If you're a little overwhelmed and you want to dive in deeper to your health challenges and you want to figure out what's happening to with your unique case, click on screen or click below the consult link. Go to justinhealth.com and schedule a consult with myself. Again, this is Dr. J here. Look forward to having more great videos coming your way. Thanks. Bye.